from Dickinson College Farm Biogas. Today we're making a video about how to make your own small batch digester for making biogas from just about anything. Today we're going to work with cow manure and food waste uh, and we're going to make a renewable gas that we can burn for cooking or if we had a larger system for making electricity. It's uh, really simple to make biogas at home and so we're here to show you how to do that. Thanks for tuning in. Biogas is produced when we have a microbial culture from, say, cow manure or other livestock manure, and we put them in an anaerobic environment with the right food products, and we keep them warm. Uh, the microbes from cows like to be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cow body temperature. And so to do that, we're gonna need a heating source, and then we're gonna need an anaerobic environment, and we're gonna need a way to collect the gas. So today what we're working with is this uh, seeding mat from a greenhouse. So uh, greenhouse seedling mat. I've also made the same with uh, using a cooler, like a, a food cooler with uh, fish tank heaters inside and a water bath. Uh, there are a variety of different ways to make a, a warm space. If you live in a warm place, you can actually just put your biogas digester out in the sun and uh, keep it warm, or maybe put a blanket over it. Anyhow, today uh, for our anaerobic environment, we're going to use this jug. Uh, it's a jug that has, you know, it's nice and sealed up, and we have one way to get the gas out. So we've got a lid with a hole in it and a tube coming off of that. This becomes our cap. Uh, we're gonna put a fluid in here. It'll be uh, no air coming in and only gas coming out. And then finally, we have a gas collector. Uh, the gas collector we're working with today is this inner tube. Uh, this one happens to be full of biogas right now. We're gonna empty it before we start the experiment and then we'll show you how it fills up. You can make a digester out of just about anything. Really, we just need, for a batch digester, we just need a sealed container uh, that's nice and tight, no leaks, and then one way for the gas to get out so we can collect it. This is an example of a floating cylinder biogas collector. So uh, this graduated cylinder here will go up and down as we produce biogas, and we can actually measure the amount of biogas that's collected. So if you wanted to do some research, say comparing uh, between two different digesters, what sort of food makes uh, more biogas, you can set up a pair of these and then compare between them. In our research for uh, testing different substrates, we use a larger version of this, and they work really well. When you have a system like this, you want to um, have your biogas come out above the water level uh, so that you don't have a back pressure uh, pushing against it. All right, now we're gonna blend up our feedstock for the digester. What we've got here is cow manure, and uh, I like to get fresh cow manure, the freshest possible. If I had like uh, old dry cow pies, they're really not gonna have the live microbes that we need to make our digester happy. So I try to find ones that are like, one or two days old, still nice and wet in the, in the inside. Uh, so these are like out of the pasture just this afternoon. Uh, I'm gonna put this here in the sink, and Another thing I've got handy is a uh, paint mixer on a drill. Uh, this is a super handy item. Um, so uh, if I didn't have one of these, I could also use a stick or just some sort of way to blend it up. But I like to use this if I have it. Um, I'm going to dilute the manure down to a consistency that's like uh, about like pea soup. So I uh, want it to be able to flow nicely and uh, not be too thick. So uh, since we're going to be heating our digester, I might as well use warm water since I'm here in the, in the lab and uh, that'll make it get started a little bit faster. So if you're in town and you have chlorinated water, that's okay, because there's so many microbes in our cow manure that they'll overwhelm the uh, sanitizing power of that chlorine that's in your tap water. I wouldn't add extra chlorine, of course, or soap. But, okay, so I'm gonna be very careful with this. I wanna put my drill on slow, so I don't make a mess. And maybe give it a couple of plunges there first. And I'm gonna nice and slowly turn All right, so that looks pretty good, nice and thin. I want it to be flowable. If it's too thick, yeah, I'll have a hard time pouring it through my funnel. Uh, and also, um, you can have a problem with gas getting trapped under the manure fibers. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my second container.
and my screen. This is a half inch, half inch hardware cloth, about one centimeter. That works really good for this process. All right, so you can see most of the stuff went through, but the uh, larger saw get cut on the, on the top there. We're going to leave them and put them back in the compost pile. All right, now I've got my screen manure to that. I'm going to add some food waste. This is food waste from Dickinson College Cafeteria. Uh, and the nice thing about Dickinson food waste is it's already pre-ground. So we have a machine there in the, in the cafeteria called a pulper extractor, and it's going to grind that stuff up to very small particles. Uh, most people don't have one of those in their kitchen, so uh, we can uh, chop it up by hand. We can put it in an old blender. Uh, at a home scale digester, oftentimes people will have an extra garbage disposal. Uh, and they actually run their food waste through a garbage disposal before it goes in the digester. So we want to keep it up nice and small so that it breaks down faster and also flows through our pipes really well. So I'm going to put a little food waste in here. You can see this is like a variety of stuff like eggshells, rice, um, you know, whatever it was being served in the cafeteria today. I just scooped that right off there. If we get too carried away with food waste early on in a project, uh, you might have some problems like uh, souring of the digester and it, the system can crash on you. One more time, I'm gonna blend that up. We're ready to load our anaerobic digester now. And uh, before we do that, I wanna share that it's important to save some space uh, for gas to accumulate at the top of the system. We're only gonna to wanna to fill it about two thirds full. So this is a two and a half gallon jug. I'm gonna fill it up to a gallon and a half here. Uh, if we're talking about liters, it's about a 10 liter jug. We're going to fill it up about seven and a half liters full. So here's my pre-mix manure slurry. And I'm just going to load that in here a few times. Now it's time to put our anaerobic digester together and put it on the heat mat connected to its gas tube. So uh, here I've got the top of the jug and you can see it's got a hole there. And that hole is connected via a little fitting to this gas tubing. Uh, so that'll be a way of getting our gas out of there. There's a nice little gasket in here to create a good seal once I tighten the lid. So there is some air in our digester, uh, which is just ambient air. It's going to have some oxygen in it. But once we get the microbes cooking in there, they're going to quickly fill that with biogas. You know, first of all, they're going to fill it with carbon dioxide, uh, and then it'll be biogas. And so it'll be in an anaerobic environment as long as we keep the lid closed. So I'm going to put that on nice and tight. And then I check, I've got a little cap here on the back, just because that's the way the jug is. I'll make sure that's good and tight too. I've got my gas tube. What's nice about this tubing is that if you have two different sizes, it can slip nicely together. So I'll just slide that into the tube on our gas collector. And that's usually a pretty good seal right there. Open up the valve. Now we've got a place for the biogas to go. And lastly, I'm gonna take my heating mat and plug it into the wall. This seedling heat mat just makes everything about 10 degrees, 10 or 20 degrees warmer than the air temperature. So it doesn't need to be regulated with a thermostat. If I had one that was a little bit more aggressive, uh, maybe I would try to do something like a fish tank heater or other things. They want to make sure I have a thermostat on that system. So be, do be careful with electric heating uh, because that is a place where you could uh, uh, cause problems. Um, lastly, I've got my heat mat set up on some uh, insulation. Um, so that way I'm not losing a lot of heat to the table. It's just mostly going into my digester. If I want to be even more aggressive, I could put a blanket over this, keep it warm, and that way it'll, um, I'll save some energy and uh, get things warm up faster. So we're ready to go. Now we're gonna, within a couple days, we should have some biogas. Uh, what I can do to help it go along is every day, come in here and just give it a mix. So by mixing, I'm gonna get all the microbes kind of moving around, they have access to, uh, different parts of, of the solution. And also I'm gonna break up any scum that might form on top of the uh, uh, manure layer. And so that'll help to release trap biogas and get it out into my gas collector. After a couple days, you should get some biogas that you can burn. Uh, and so with uh, adult supervision and in a safe place, uh, we can check to see if our biogas is flammable. So I'm gonna take my accumulated biogas here 
hook it up to this tube. And I'm gonna run it through the stove. This is a, actually a gas stove that's made to run on biogas. This comes from China. Uh, but we have adapted various things like Coleman tube burners, as well as like a Bunsen burner from a chemistry lab. Uh, so I'm gonna open up my gas valve here. And let's see. Hey. Now, when you're starting a little biodigester, oftentimes the first gas that comes out is mostly carbon dioxide, and it won't burn readily. Um, but uh, you might see that it almost holds a flame, and then you know that you've got a partial methane content. Once your gas holds a flame, then you know that you've got uh, about between 50 and 60% methane in your biogas. You've got a burnable gas that you can use for cooking or uh, doing other fun things. What you can expect is that your digester will take a few days to kind of wake up, and then if it's happy, it'll make some gas, uh, and then over time it's gonna slow down once it eats all the food that's in there. So we might start off with like no biogas volume, and then slowly kind of reach a peak here, and then taper off like that. When it tapers off here, that means that the microbes have eaten most of the food that's inside. And so we could actually pour out like a half gallon or a gallon of material, uh, and then put some new stuff in there, recap it, and it should start to pick up again and make more biogas. One more thing we can do to make our biodigester happy is to add a little bit of baking soda. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, and that's a buffer that we can use to uh, stabilize the digester so that it doesn't get too acidic in there. Uh, so I might put a tablespoon or so in here. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. I hope you enjoyed our video. Uh, we're really excited about biogas here at Dickinson College Farm, and so we encourage you to check out our other videos. Uh, just search YouTube for Dickinson College Farm Biogas. Um, I hope you give this a try. Remember, if you're a young person, talk to a parent, uh, teacher, uh, before you do try this at home. Uh, but it's a great way to uh, you know, make some renewable natural gas from waste products and to see what the potential is for uh, renewable energy here uh, on planet Earth.